thank you, Lin, and uh, thanks for everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, my name is Yi Lu. I come from University of Wisconsin, and uh, I'm going to present a paper, um, you know, co-authored with uh, Rachel in the audience, and uh, also uh, Jane Gu from University of Connecticut. So what we are going to talk about is the generative AI assistance in professional service market. So you will see there are two keywords here in the title. One is generative AI, another one is professional service market, which I'm going to explain this to. So first of all, generative AI, I don't think I need to explain it. Okay, so this, <laughs> this conference is all about generative AI, which can, of course, generate some content. And what we want to study in this paper is the application of such tools, generative AI tools, in a professional service market. So what is a professional service market? When we think about the professional service market, we tend to think about it as a market where the product is something we call as a professional opinion. So I will give you some examples to help you understand what this really is. So for example, medical diagnosis. So the, the, the professional opinion, the product is just uh, maybe, the, uh, as we already seen in the last talk, some, some, some report of your uh, current health issues. And uh, legal service, definitely, or where the, the product is the, uh, uh, the, the report about the, what, what the best action to do in such, such uh, legal issues. And also financial service. So maybe the product is an opinion, a professional opinion about which uh, stock for you to invest. And also consulting for sure, uh, where the product is the consulting uh, report. So all these kind of examples uh, represent a professional service market when, uh, where you know, uh, we do want to have a professional opinion as the uh, output, as the product. So in such a market, if we want to apply generative AI here, so which means like, for example, a consultant is using, uh, is using generative AI in the process of generating its own opinions, what will happen? So that's something that we want to answer in this project. So uh, basically, overall, the question is how does the adoption of such AI tools will reform the competition in such a professional service market? And specifically, we want to see how does AI assistance really affect the service provider's pricing, competitive status, and profits. Of course, we will also explore uh, its uh, implication for, for consumer welfare. And if time permits, I will also cover you know, how will advancements in AI capability affect uh, you know, this kind of um, adoption decisions. So we want to endogenize that. Uh, so let me get started to dive deep into these uh, uh, research questions. So first of all, we want to mention some unique characteristics of professional service market. So that's uh, why this is a, such a unique market that we want to emphasize, and also why you know, AI has some, 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 some sp special or a unique uh, impact in such market. So first of all, if you think about uh, such professional service market, in this market, the general AI tools usually can assist, but do not really replace human intelligence. What do I mean by that? Just uh, for example, uh, JP Morgan, they, will, uh, they, they announced that they were going to introduce a product that is uh, powered by generative AI, which is called Index GPT, that can help you know, uh, the, the financial uh, service providers to generate some data analytics report. But at the end of the day, what kind of uh, uh, stocks that you should invest in, such a, a really recommendations, or the um, opinion, they have to be generated by real human. So basically here, we just want to say that uh, we are not really studying AI that can replace human, but it's just uh, uh, when AI can assist in human decision. Another important characteristic of such a professional service market is there's a huge quality variation in terms of uh, how uh, different um, uh, providers can provide, uh, the, the product that different the providers can provide. So what do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. So this is an example for uh, uh, you know, medical service. So for different levels of, uh, uh, so, so here what you can see is the, the distribution here is the quality okay, of different levels of um, uh, medical service providers. Okay, so this is the, the, the score, the exam score for them to take some, uh, for, for, for this uh, uh, medical service providers to take, okay? So you can see some of them can have a really high score, some of them can have a really low score. And uh, where is ChatGPT in this uh, graph? So some of them you can see it can um, beat, you know, 
uh, the, 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 the best one. Uh, some of them can, can, can beat the, the lowest one, but usually the ChatGPT or the AI cannot beat the best performing you know, human providers. So basically ChatGPT or you know, related generative AI uh, assistant can help you maybe reach an a intermediate level between the lowest and the highest quality providers. And the third important characteristic of uh, uh, such professional service market is consumers can sometimes benefit from what we call a second opinion. That means you can just uh, go to uh, another uh, professional service uh, provider and uh, get another opinion. And you can combine these two different opinions and it may improve your decision. So a recent survey shows that seeking a second opinion in medical service is really common. And uh, more than 50% of the time, you can see that uh, this kind of uh, discrepancy uh, or diversity in the, in, the, in the opinions provided by different providers can uh, really have an impact on the treatment outcome. So basically what we want to say is like um, in such a professional service market, because this product is not like the consumer's, uh, uh, consumer consumption goods, it's more like an idea. So basically combining different ideas can be helpful. Uh, that's a very unique aspect for such professional service market. However, if you think about the adoption of generative AI, it will reduce the value of second opinion because such generative AI tools, you can think about them, they rely on common uh, resources like you know, the same training data or similar training data or similar algorithms. So the, the outcome that they can generate tend to be uh, more similar. So basically when, when the uh, analysts, they use such um, uh, generative AI tools, their opinions tend to be more similar. So that's what we call uh, as a opinion homogenize, homogenizing effect of generative AI. And uh, there are several you know, works, uh, empirical works, and uh, some of them I believe is done by, by <laughs> the, the, the attendant of this uh, uh, conference. So saying that, for example, compared to human-only solutions, when you use uh, AI uh, to generate some solutions, you will find that uh, uh, it become less innovative, okay? And also you can see that the generative AI assistance will, uh, it, although it can enhance the creativity of an individual provider, an individual writer here, but if you collectively see the collective creativity for more writers, so this is in a writing task, you will see the, the diversity uh, goes down. So for th this kind of, we have some this uh, uh, empirical uh, evidence showing that using generative AI, using generative AI as an assistant, in providing uh, opinions will give you less diverse outcomes, less diverse reports. And we will uh, incorporate this in our analysis and see you know, what's, the unique aspect, uh, what's the unique impact of such an idea. So basically, let me uh, quickly introduce our model to see uh, what the impact of such homogenization impact. So we assume there's uh, one high expertise service provider uh, who's um, Quality will be QH and price will be PH. And there are two low quality or low expertise service providers whose uh, prices are PL1 and uh, PL2. And uh, here, as we said, the product is opinion report or some prediction of uh, the world. Uh, so we, uh, we follow a paper by uh, uh, Savary and Parker. So we just uh, assume that this uh, kind of um, report is a draw, a random draw from a normal distribution and the opinions on average are okay, but uh, you know, they, can, uh, they can have some, some, some variation. And the quality, quality is negatively related to uh, the, the, the variance. So basically, you assume that the quality of QH is one minus uh, uh, sigma zero, uh, and, uh, uh, sigma zero squared, and the QL, that's the lower quality, is uh, one minus sigma squared, with uh, the higher quality has a lower uh, you know, uh, uh, variance. And uh, so we have some uh, QH equal to one and QL less than a half, uh, less than fifth, uh, one fifth. This kind of assumption is a technical assumption to uh, ensure a large quality gap. And uh, when we want to combine these two uh, reports, that's where the second opinion comes from. Well, we just follow a base rule. Okay, when we combine this, uh, these two, uh, you know, ideas using base rule, that's the uh, outcome that you can get. And uh, so where we call this row is the correlation of the provider's opinions. That's, uh, uh, or the other way around, we let D equal to one minus zero that captures how diverse you know, the ideas of two uh, uh, providers. 
And then the quality of Brown combining the two lower experts report can be given by uh, this expression, just uh, some, some derivation from this base rule. And um, then we want to say something about providers generated AI adoption. How will it affect uh, the, the outcome? So basically, we first of all, based on this result, we have seen that the generative AI result is somewhat in between the best performing uh, providers and the uh, poor, provi uh, poor, provi uh, poor quality providers. So we assume that uh, the quality of a general AI opinion is uh, in between QI and QH. Uh, and also we want to model that homo uh, homogenization effect by, uh, oh, by the way, we have uh, also a, a thing that is enhanced the corporate image when you use AI. So now if you say you're an AI company, people may think that you are, uh, you know, <laughs> one of the top, okay? So, and uh, when, when you really want to use the generative AI for high expertise provider, this quality does not change. So it doesn't give you some uh, direct uh, benefit from the quality side. But for the low expertise providers, you can see the quality can increase from QL to Q hat. But as we introduced, the, uh, you know, for this kind of um, uh, homogenization effect, it eliminates the diversity in their opinions, which means like the D uh, becomes zero. How much time do I have? Four minutes, okay, good enough. Uh, so then we have consumers, okay? And uh, uh, consumer market is just a very um, uh, typical vertical competition. So I, I will just uh, quickly uh, go over it. So basically we have a preference parameter which uh, specifies a preference for quality, which is beta. And uh, you know, when, then the market can be divided to you know, different quality providers. So this is very typical in the uh, vertical competition. Okay, so now let me introduce our results. So what we find in this paper is like uh, the most important part that we want to emphasize is the you know, downstream uh, implications of the homogenization effect or opinion homogenizing effect. So basically we, we find that in the case when uh, people use uh, uh, AI, when, when, when I mean the uh, providers are using AI, adopting AI, we find that uh, the high expertise provider can increase their price, okay? And uh, the low expertise uh, can providers can reduce their price. So know that this is really different from the, uh, if there's no opinion homogenizing effect. Because if you think about in a competitive market, if your opponents, their you know, uh, quality is increased, okay, as a high quality provider, I did not get a really a direct benefit from using AI. So actually I lose my competitive advantage. So intuitively we may think that their price should be lower. But in, in, in this, uh, with the homogenization effect, we find that the prices can be actually higher. And also we find that the demand for both the high XPs provider and each of the low XPs provider can decrease, although the total market expands. So what's the intuition behind that? So if there's no you know, uh, homogenization effect, uh, we know that uh, someone will buy, some consumers will buy the reports from both of the providers. Okay, so which means like the, the providers, because they have this homogenization, uh, sorry, because they, they, they have this kind of second opinion, the value of second opinion, they can benefit from buying more than one report. So that means like these two reports or these two providers, they serve as comp complements. However, after the AI kicks in, you know that because of this hom homogenization effect, no one would really like to buy more than one report because they, they both rely on AI, so their reports tend to be more similar, so people do not want to buy uh, uh, you know, two reports, more than two reports anymore. So that's why you can see these two um, uh, providers, they become totally substitutes. So that's why you can see actually uh, it, the, 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 the low quality providers can be hurt and the high quality providers can be uh, actually better off. So we, we identify different uh, regions for which one is better off, which one is worse off. And uh, we also uh, talk about something about the uh, consumer surplus. So we find that uh, adopting AI uh, can decrease or increase consumer welfare. But in general, we find that consumers uh, with uh, smaller theta, that means like with weak quality preferences, they can benefit from such generative AI adoption because it makes uh, such service more affordable, more like uh, you know approachable. Okay, so that's one finding. Another thing is we we find that the, for the high preference uh, or strong preference consumers, actually uh, using AI can decrease their profit, uh, can decrease their 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 utility. The reason is the increased price 
okay, for the high quality providers as we've seen from the last slide, which means like they make the high quality provider less approachable, okay? So they have to pay more to get the, uh, you know, comparable quality uh, result. Okay, so I, I don't have more time, so I just want to summarize, uh, summarize, uh, summarize here. So we find that uh, even if high expertise provider uh, do not receive a direct gain from Gentle AI, uh, you can still see that they can benefit from it from the uh, profit wise. And also we find that con uh, consumers with weak quality preferences, usually those with lower income, uh, will, be benefit, uh, will benefit from the adoption of generative AI, uh, but of course it may uh, hurt the um, uh, consumers with uh, high uh, quality preference. And uh, so we actually highlight the advantage of human intelligence when confronting the challenge of AI. Because last, uh, yesterday we have seen some talks and people discuss, you know, uh, it, since it cannot really benefit high quality providers or high, high skilled workers, uh, then what, 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 what will people go? Where will people go? And we just uh, provide, um, you know, possible uh, more bright outcome for, for people competing with AI. Okay, so I will stop here and uh, I'm open for questions. Thank you. Oh, clearly time does not permit, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Can you help me? <laughs> Thank you. I have two questions. First, yep. um, why, uh, if I remember correctly, why does lower variance must mean higher consumer utility? That's first question. Second, like you use a real number to represent the report, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like what does it mean? Like a higher number means what kind of report? Right. So basically, you know, our setting is like uh, the report means uh, a prediction of the real world. Okay, the real world can be on the real line anywhere. And uh, basically, you have distribution and you have a random draw of your prediction of the real world. So we assume that on average, you know, whether you are a low expertise uh, provider or a high expertise provider, at least you'll get some training. So on average, you will get it correctly. But the more variance you have, actually the, the, the quality is, is low. It's, uh, it's more random, okay? So it's uh, more likely for you to generate some, some, some uh, poor predictions of the uh, status of the world. So that's the idea. So that, that just follows the uh, uh, paper called Marketing Intelligence or whatever. <laughs> uh, I have a question about your assumption about the homogenizing effect. Uh, I feel like I'm not very familiar with the uh, professional service industry, but I feel like if you have an opinion first and then you use the gener generative AI tools, probably you will actually become less homogenized. For example, like uh, if I ask you whether I should vote for Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, if I already have an opinion first, then maybe using this gener generative AI tool can create more divergence in opinions, right? But if I do not have an opinion first, I ask the gener generative AI whether you can give me some suggestion, maybe in the future I'll become more homogen homogenized. Yeah, so that's one of the questions I received from the review team. Are you in the review team? <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. So uh, the, the key idea here is like, um, uh, we uh, actually in our revision we try to add some micro foundation for uh, you know how people really interact with AI. So your uh, suggestion is like people have their opinion first and they search for you know AI, uh, you know for evidence or whatever. But in the professional service market, usually for example in consulting, the workflow is first of all they want to collect some information, collect some background knowledge, and then they want to you know based on the knowledge they collect, based on the information they collect, they want to develop some uh, you know solutions. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's consulting you know, in the audience. So basically people spend more time with Genesis AI in the first stage. So basically it's the other way around. So people spend more time uh, in, uh, with Genesis AI in uh, collecting and summarizing the, uh, the information. So uh, that part is the, where the homogenization effect comes in. Yeah. Well, reviewer two, be aware of revealing yourself in this audience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, am I running out of time? Oh, you have some time. Any other? So I want to ask about the responsibility of the professional opinion. So when a professional provided the opinion about it, then the provider could be responsible for their opinion in some cases. Mm -hmm. So many of the managers saying that why they are reluctant to adapt to AI technology, one of the reasons is, hey, AI made a decision and I'm the responsible for the decision. No, that's not fair. That is why many managers are reluctant to 
accept AI. If you consider this context in your research, how would it be impact on the professional opinion formation? Right, so that's why we have the uh, uh, difference between high quality provider and low quality provider. So for low quality providers, definitely they can, because they, they all they know, right? They, they're, uh, as we have already seen in some of the topics today, they, their pro, uh, performance can be improved. So they can, it's easier for them to apply this kind of uh, tools. And we also have the high you know, quality provider, it's, they, they may be more reluctant. So that's why you see that their quality does not change. Right? So we have this kind of difference. And uh, partly, you know, can re uh, hopefully the, your question can be resolved. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.